Hey, Silver Steeler here, back with Kurt Plowman from Dragon's Horde. And uh, he's got some stories about 9-11 gold and silver. So tell the story, my man. Well, yeah, our country, you know, was rallied 9-11-2001 uh, um, around the terrorist attack that occurred in our country that brought so many people uh, back into thinking of ourselves as a world player. And many people forget that when an event like that occurs, it affects every part of our life, and even in numismatics, we've been affected by that. Um, you know, people have asked me uh, about 9-11 silver and gold. They ask me, what's its value? What's out there? What do I believe? What do I not believe? There's all kinds of television programs out there celebrating it. There's all kinds of online venues that are, are selling it or touting it. Um, so part of the conversation or discussion always leads to um, what is 9-11 silver and gold? What's different about it? You know, well, no, it is not gold and silver that was mined on 9-11. Okay, we're specifically referring to uh, precious metals that were involved in the World Trade Center disaster. Um, many people know that when the, the towers collapsed, that the World Trade Center contained a great deal of precious metals. Uh, some speculate that it was a couple of hundred million, other speculations are around $2.4 billion worth of gold, silver, and platinum that was buried. Depending on which source you believe or follow, the numbers vary. What we do know for fact is this. There were several depositories and vaults located in the World Trade Center complex. Some of them were located in Tower 5, some of them were located in Tower 4. We know for a fact that there was gold and silver being transported to and from the towers on the days of the attack. This is proof because during the cleanup, it was discovered in one of the service tunnels that runs under Tower 5 that there was a transport vehicle loaded full of gold bullion. We also know that during the recovery efforts that Brinks was tasked with transporting the majority of the holdings by a company called Comex which was the major holdings corporation for one of the foreign banks. Um, we don't have their permission to use their name, so I don't want to do that. Uh, you can Google it, really easy to see. Um, <laughs> but it is a foreign bank uh, that was using Com Comex to hold their treasury gold. Okay. Now, many people know that gold and silver and platinum are hoarded and stocked uh, and traded. Unlike most things that are traded, um, gold and silver are usually held by one or two large corporations that are out there and they hold the real item in a vault. Comex held a great amount of gold, silver, and platinum. It was held primarily in bars. Some of it was held in coinage, but majority of it was held in bars. That gold and silver was of course involved in the catastrophe that occurred. When they went to recover the gold and silver, it didn't happen overnight. Um, it started two days later because of clearing of the rubble and waiting for the rest of the structures to be settled and all of that to make it safe for recovery people to go in there and get it. They started to recover the gold and silver and platinum that were down there. Um, and of course, they discovered not only were there issues with getting to it, for example, they had to figure out electricity to get to the vault doors to open the vault doors. There was uh, discrepancies as to where it was located. Some people even believe that it fell, that it was housed in one of the upper parts of the building. This, of course, is not true. The vaults were located under the towers. They were underground vaults. Oh, so it just had a whole bunch of rubble on top of it. A whole bunch of rubble on top of it. They had to get to it. And then um, to top that off, you've, you've got <laughs> no safe way to get there because everything is covered not only in rubble, but the roads and the accesses and all that had to be cleared. And then when you get to it, you're talking about a very large sum of money that's very tempting for, you know, thieves to go in and get. So they, they hired uh, Brink Security to go in and get that. Well, when they got the gold and the silver and the platinum, the majority of it, as I said, was recovered in bullion, in, in bars. Literally pallets and pallets of gold were being pulled out of the ground. When they got to the truck, they discovered that the driver managed to get out somehow safely. The, there was no casualty inside the truck that was transporting all this gold and silver, but the contents were still there. Wait, 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 wait a second. Somebody survived? In that? They believe, they, they don't know, really know for a fact what happened, but they believe that he got out right when the attack occurred. Uh, uh -huh. That he, Because it was in one of the tunnels, he couldn't get the vehicle out, but he himself was able to get out. Uh, and I don't know the entire details of what happened to the individual who was driving the transport truck, but uh, you know, it was apparent 
that the truck was not on its way in to the World Trade Center, but rather on its way out of the World Trade Center. So there's some discussion as to why was he transporting this large amount of gold? Were they transferring assets? Well, it turns out they were. Um, as part of the regular routine, they would move assets from one bank to another, one vault sure. to another. But there was also some discussion, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, about maybe people knew in advance that it wasn't a good place to have your gold on, on deposit. Um, so all this gold's been recovered. Uh, some of it was being transported to other vaults, you know, from the destroyed storage site to the new storage site for that particular bank. Some of it was already being transported to Collector's World to be graded and certified. Now, interestingly enough, this all occurred very, very quickly, within days of the catastrophe occurring. So you will hear examples of American coinage, some of it gold, some of it silver, that was affected by the destruction that occurred there. You know, we have fires, we have chemicals, we have uh, water, other contaminants, and many items that were, of course, inside the vault were affected by that. Um, there's also uh, some discussion about the fact that the majority of the coinage that was there has been accounted for. It is the raw bullion that's not been accounted for. Um, there's a lot of discrepancy, or not discrepancy, but a lot of discussion that's held around World Trade Center gold and silver about what is World Trade Center gold and silver. Well, there are two different kinds, and I've got a couple of examples out here for you to see. So this is a 2001 um, American Silver Eagle. It is. Uh, it came from a third-party company. It was in a package that said World Trade Center silver, smoke affected. That was the attribution that they put on it. This piece was not graded by PCGS. It was not graded by Collector's World. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Collector's World is the parent company for PCGS. They're the same company, just two different branches. And when they started grading these coins, the original plan was that only a few of them would go and get graded and certified just to preserve them as something that they knew would have additional value. Mm -hmm. They suddenly realized there was going to be a much larger demand, so they started transferring them from Collector's World to PCGS. So inside these coins, you have ones that are attributed. Now, we, we really honestly have no way of knowing for sure that this was involved in World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. it, it does have the correct appearances, but there's no real way to know it unless it's been attributed by one of those companies. And literally every one of those coins that has been attributed were transported directly from the catastrophe site onto uh, Collector's World and PCGS to be graded and certified. So those coins, we know for a fact that they were. Now there are a lot of companies out there like this third party company that did package these up and sell them and they're collecting that premium. They're charging more money for this particular coin than um, just a regular 2001 impaired Silver Eagle. As we know, this would never ever grade out as being a, a, a grade worthy coin now because of its condition. And it, this one's actually affected both uh, front and back. Um, and what's most most common about the affected coins is almost all of them that have smoke or fire damage are end roll coins. They're coins that were in the ends yeah. of the rolls or ends of the tubes. Enders. Yeah, enders, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, stackers are very familiar with that term. But that's the, the number one example of World Trade Center attributable precious metals. This stuff is attributable, meaning we know that if it is graded by PCGS or Collector's World, that that item genuinely came from the World Trade Center recovery. We have other materials out there that are in existence that purport to be from World Trade Center silver, and we all hope that they're honest, such as this example here. So this is one of the commemorative pieces that's out there. This is a one ounce silver piece that has been clad in uh, uh, 999 fine gold. Interestingly enough, both pieces are supposed to be from the World Trade Center. Uh, the silver is supposed to be bullion that was recovered. Yeah. And the gold is supposed to be bullion that were recovered, meaning these were never numismatica, they were never coins. Uh -huh. They've made, in this case, a three-dimensional piece. Now, this one came, in, came to us in a damaged cell. It was already cracked and damaged, and the outer cardboard was destroyed that it was shipped with. This came from a person's collection, but uh, these are you can readily see these on the Internet. This piece is removable. Um, we did put this on a Sigma. Uh, this is actually 999 fine silver. Yes. And this piece does grade out as being gold-clad silver. So it does grade out as being actual gold and actual silver. Uh, interestingly enough, it's got the beautiful memorial right there on the back uh, with the, the anniversary commemorative piece. Um, these were done for the fifth anniversary of 9-11, so 9-11-2016.
or I'm sorry, not 2016. 2006. 2006. Right. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, and it does have uh, on the top of it, if you can, I don't know if you can read this very well or not, but uh, it actually says, uh, even grief recedes with time, but we shall never forget. It has a silhouette of the two towers that is now missing, and it comes with the silver tower to replace it, which actually fits into a little stand right like that. This is uh, one of the better examples in that the edge is actually inscribed that it is actually 999 fine silver. I'm not sure how well it shows up in the video, but it actually does. It is actually inscribed 999 fine silver. Um, unfortunately, we have to take this company's word for it that this silver and gold really did come from the World Trade Center. We would hope that they would not try to defraud anyone on an event such as this, but it has occurred. Oh, yeah. And as we now know, there are companies out there that are making a lot of imitation items. Um, there are some companies that are four-letter words uh, that start with the letter W that you can search for these items and find them on there that are replicas. They will say that they're a replica, they're a duplicate, they're a commemorative piece that is designed to copy these items, but mm -hmm. they're not the actual item. And unfortunately what's happening is people are getting duped or fooled into believing they're buying a piece of, you know, United States currency history. Uh, but when they're really buying is either a piece that is may or may not be clad in World Trade Center silver, may or may not actually be silver or gold at all. Right. Um, and then to top that off is everyone needs to remember that this piece is, of course, not numismatica. It is a commemorative piece that's manufactured by a company that has purchased silver and gold from someone who at one point in time owned gold and silver on repository at the World Trade Center. Right. Now, all of that's legitimate. What's, what, what's the value of that? Well, that's very subjective. So realistically, it's always going to be worth at least an ounce of, of silver. So right. today, $18.39. <laughs> right. um, there are people who will pay a greater premium for it. If you go online to order one right now, they're marketed for thirty nine ninety five. Hmm. So it's not a really highly valuable piece. Now, right. that, that is for this collector piece here. Right. On, on the trade-off to that, an attributed piece of World Trade Center silver regularly sells for anywhere from $59 to $105 regularly on most of the markets that you can find it. So you can go on to any of the bigger companies, eBay or uh, you know, AppMex or JM Bullion or GSM and find you know, in, in almost any of the late night television shows that sell gold and coins and you will find World Trade Center silver pieces and or gold pieces um, that regularly sell for $59 to $104 for silver pieces. As a general rule, you can assume about a 40% premium for gold. So if it's a $100 gold piece, it's going to be $140 because it's been attributed to World Trade Center uh, right. bullion, so, or not bullion, but a coinage. The difference to that, of course, is that it's, it is actually U.S. coinage that's been affected by uh, a terrible event in our history. Now, I say terrible because the actual event itself was terrible. What followed, our country rallying together and becoming a unified group was uh, amazing. And that's another thing that all of this does is it commemorates a time sure. when our country went through this huge shock and we came together to do things we'd never done before. We changed our way of life. The terrorists that did these things. Can, can, I, can I say one thing right there? Sure. Did you not think that that was, would go on a little bit longer than it did? Because while we all came together for a little while, it certainly seemed like within, to me anyway, within three to five years, the fingers started pointing at one another again. Well, there is some of that, yeah. I would have thought it would have lasted longer. In my opinion, I would have thought. It just seemed like the fingers started. We came together, but boy, to me, it didn't seem like for very long. Well, it's easier for people to rally in time of crisis than it is to rally during time of celebration. So when people are angry and they're mad, their tempers fly, and that's a, that's a stronger driving force than peace. War is easier to perpetuate than peace. Yeah. It takes more work to rally people when they're not scared. When people are threatened, they turn over authority. They're more likely to join together and band together. That's why things like uh, mob mentality occur. When you have a mob mentality, one or two people may not necessarily act a certain way, but you put 20 of the same people together and they'll act completely differently. Same thing occurs in a time of tragedy. 9-11 was forefront right in front of our minds. We see these things. You know, We're hearing every day of people who are were killed, maimed, injured during one of the attacks, any of them, not just the World Trade Center, right. you know. But then you also hear about the lasting effects, people getting black lung from cleaning up on the pile. You hear, look at the things that happened around Hurricane Katrina and the cleanup at, at, uh, in New Orleans. You know, people rally around those events because they last a long time, but 
as time goes on, there are other tragedies that replace them or other joys that fulfill them and they start to forget or maybe not be mm -hmm. quite as centered on it. It's kind of the same thing as the grieving process. At a certain point in time, you start to get over it. Do also, you, you become a little bit numb to it. Do you think the United States is starting to forget about 9-11 a little bit? I don't know that we're forgetting about it, but I think that we're focusing on other things. I also think that we've reached a time frame, if you'll recall, you know, this is now 2019. Yes. Okay, so it's been 18, 18 years. years. Yeah. The adults that are now voting were not alive. The people who are coming in to vote this year were mm -hmm. not alive on September 11th, 2001. Right. They have no living memory of the occurrence. It's the same thing that's happened with every world but, war. But certain they know the date. They've sure. been taught in school about it. Well, they've been taught in school that it occurred. The right. versions of what happened, why it happened, have been told different stories over and over. That comes down to the same thing that happens with these coins. Uh, you have different people telling different versions of the same story. So you have a piece of truth that gets retold through different avenues with different twists on them. And then You've eventually got, the story is... So watered down, they don't know who to believe, and right. it's just a story. Now mm -hmm. it becomes not so much an accounting of history, but as an accounting of mythos. It's, it's like saying, okay, uh, the game of telephone. The person at the beginning of the line who was there knows what really happened. Yep. The person at the end of the game of telephone mm -hmm. is going off of what he was told by the person who was told by the person in front of him and the person right. in front of him. I've played person, that game person. as a youngster. We yep. all would be in a circle. And in somebody school. Would have, in school. Yep. And somebody would say a sentence, and by the time it got to that last person to start the circle again, there would only be half of it left. Mm -hmm. And, and really? maybe some made up words that weren't even you know, there in the beginning. Tony walked across the street in a blue shirt. By the time it was done, as Janie was back, back, uh, wait, 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 backwards dancing in a pink dress. The, right. You know, there were bits and pieces of the truth. We thought we have a person doing something in clothing. That's all the same. But the reality is what happened. So, like with 9 11, there are stories of, well, the government knew it was going to happen beforehand, or the government knew and didn't do anything, or the government didn't know. We were caught completely off guard. All of these things could have happened. Mm -hmm. Or the government was responsible. Or the government was responsible for it. That's <laughs> yeah, another that possibility. One. Exactly. So the, the retelling of the story, you know, there, there's a great book about World Trade Center, Silver and Gold, that talks about the fact that there are so many millions of dollars worth of gold and bullion that are not accounted for. Now, they say not accounted for because it either was never there to begin with, it was there and it came up missing, or they've overinflated that it was there to begin with. Or it was there and it got stolen. We have banks that have taken hundreds of millions of dollars worth of losses that claim that gold never arrived, that it, it, it was there, they have a certificate stating it was there, but then when it was transferred into their vault, it's not there. And well, then we just watched a show the other night about the building of them. Yes. And they, it was like set in a bathtub because they had to hold back the Hudson. Right. So they got it all down to bedrock, right. and they smoothed it out at the bottom. So basically it was a bathtub to fit all those buildings in. Yes. So when they cleaned it up, it became back down. The bathtub survived. Right. And so they got it back down to the original bathtub. So in other words, what was there had to be at least scourged to and gone through. Yeah, there's no, there's no way that it was buried under the new construction. There's right. no way that you're, you're walking on gold and silver that somehow got left behind. It's gone somewhere or it never existed. So that conspiracy theory lives on to this day. The same thing occurs with the information that led up to the 9-11 attacks. So is it possible that somebody knew before it occurred? Absolutely. Is it possible that somebody didn't tell somebody? Is it possible the information got lost in the chain of command? Is it possible that they didn't believe it, that it, you know, it was just a, a red herring, that it's a false lead that's going to occur? Is it possible that maybe... Uh, we really were caught completely off guard. We were all just laying around having a good time on the weekend. All of these things are possible, and the stories that are being told now are a watered-down version of some of all of that. All right. And the kids that are taking over our country, the leaders that are coming into age now, don't really know what the truth is. They all know what they believe and what they've been taught, so everybody has a different version of it. So when you, you say, are they falling away from uh, remembering it, or are they, are they ignoring yeah, it? They're starting to forget. Yeah. I don't really know that it's necessarily a sense of forgot as it's a sense of never informed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the same thing has That's happened with every, every world war. Right. You know, Absolutely. Uh, you, if you look at the building of any national monument, funds have to be raised and people have to get together and rally behind it. And you have to convince people that it's worth spending money on. Now, if you had built that same monument the day after the event, everybody and their brother would have helped build paid for it. 
Right. Okay. If the world, let, let's say the Korean War Memorial, okay, if they had tried to build that six months after the Korean War ended, it would have been much easier to build than it was at the time they actually built it. <laughs> the same thing is said about the Washington Monument. The same thing is said about the Jeffersonian Museum. Any major national treasure, national site that we have, it's built much, much later, and you have to convince these people that are currently in power that it's a worthwhile cause, and that's because most of them that are involved now may not have been around when it occurred. So I don't really think that we're forgetting, as I think that our living memories are not as long as they need to be. So if we wanted to remember those things, we have to figure out a way to make sure that we are retelling those stories. And that brings me back to why I love coins so much, because these items will ensure that no matter what, when I'm gone, when I've kicked the bucket, somebody's going to inherit this item and pick it up and look at it, and they're going to say, what the heck is that? And they'll do research, and they'll find all of this information. They'll find the truth, a version of the truth, and lots of stories about what the truth is, and they'll have to make up their own mind, but they'll have an, a tangible thing. And that's what the coinage is so great about, in the United States anyway, is that it ties directly to what's going on in our world today. The, item, the things that occur in our lifetime influence the coins that will be made tomorrow. So... It's it as I as I've said before. It's a living hobby because it continues to go on. Uh, it, it is something that will outlast me. The things that are made today aren't going to just disappear. Oh, right. You know, most of them anyway. Right. We hope. Have you ever been in them? In the World Trade Center. I've been to the World Trade Center. I had never been in them before they uh, they were attacked. Um, I have been to the memorial site. Yeah. Um, very emotional, even for me. And I wasn't, you know, I, I, I didn't have that family that were affected by it. I was not, right. when I say affected, I mean, I didn't have anybody directly in consequence with that. My connections are just like most people's in the country and that, that we are aware of what we were doing that day. We know what happened. We followed along. We felt loss as a country. And now as a, as a coin dealer, I get to see the backlash of it. And, and unfortunately, I see where this tragedy is in some kind, sometimes been taken advantage of by unscrupulous companies oh, sure. that are taking advantage of it. They know that people mm. are, are in love with that part of our history and well, they'll pay money for it. I guess I was fortunate enough as a kid that I lived in New Jersey. So a lot of our class trips used to be either to mm -hmm. the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, or the Twin Towers. Yep. So I guess I was just blessed because I got to go to, I mean, look how hard it is to go to the Statue of Liberty now. Oh, yeah. You got to virtually, what? plan it ahead and schedule it yeah well you can go to the statue of liberty but <laughs> you just can't go up can't go inside and, it, yeah. and you know I'm, I'm so blessed because it's so hard to do now and of course the trade center being gone i i was on the observation deck on that mm -hmm. so be something i'll never forget especially after 9 11. right absolutely well that's another another piece of history that's inside you that you get to share through word of mouth that hopefully people will remember and uh you know if we're lucky it won't get forgotten because we will talk about it, but it also has something to back it up, which is, you know, luckily numismatica, our hobby, our favorite right. pastime, is, has given us a tool to remember by as well. Well, listen, Kurt, appreciate your time. God bless America. Absolutely. And everyone, have uh, have a great week. Thank you. That's so weird. <laughs> remember to like, subscribe, oh, and all yeah, those other good things. You can cut that in. I can't, I can't cut that in. I can't.